Hey everyone, welcome to Crafting with JC, where I make budget-friendly home decor that look like you spend a whole lot more. On today's video, I am showing my top 10 favorite Dollar Tree DIYs that I made using mainly Dollar Tree supplies. So I hope you enjoy this compilation and I will see you in my next video. Have a wonderful and blessed day today. Bye! For the first DIY, you will need about 57 tumbling blocks, which I got at Dollar Tree, and 31 jumbo craft sticks. The first thing I did was stain the blocks and craft sticks with Minwax stain in dark walnut. Staining individual blocks can be a tediously long process, so instead I group five blocks together, like so, and apply the stain, wipe out the excess, then turn all five over at the same time and repeat. And doing it this way just cuts that staining time significantly. Now I'm going to leave the ends unstained because I will be gluing these ends together and with wood glue it's always better to glue raw wood to raw wood if possible since that will produce a much stronger bond. Next I stain the craft sticks then wipe out the excess. I'm going to glue three blocks together and I'm going to make 17 of these. 16 will be used to make the frame for the size of the box and one will be glued to the bottom middle for extra support. Now I decided to stain the wood first because the stain is dark and I'm using wood glue and if that seeps out the stain just won't absorb well or evenly into the wood. Otherwise, if you want to stain after, just make sure to sand those joints well before staining or you can just paint it or leave it natural. Once that is done, I'm going to glue the blocks together to form a square. So glue them like so and I make four of these. Then I take six craft sticks and place them on top of the square frames, making sure they're spaced out evenly and then I glue them down. Once the sticks are glued to all four squares, I form my box. Now when gluing the sides together, it's important to make sure that one side is glued in the same way or same position as the parallel side, so that when you're looking down at the box, it should be a rectangular shape and not a square, otherwise the sides are going to look uneven. Now with some help, I take some very large rubber bands and I place that around the box just to keep it snug and tight and I just leave it alone for about 10 minutes before I carefully start working on it again. I'm going to take 6 blocks and I'm going to glue 3 on the edge like so and this will be used to make the base. So this will actually be the bottom of the box. Then I take some glue and dab a small amount on the tip of each craft stick, then turn over and press the wide side of the block against the glue making sure it's laying flat on the surface. And then I repeat the process on the other side. I take the seven remaining craft sticks and measure and cut, making sure it will fit nicely inside the box and then I glue them down and that makes the base. I let it dry a bit, then I turn over the box and I glue down the remaining blocks right down the center of the base and that just gives it extra support. And that is it! This came out so beautiful! It was so easy to make and yet it looks absolutely high-end. For this project, you will need 75 tumbling blocks, which I got at Dollar Tree. Now one box comes with 72 blocks, so rest assured you will have plenty left over for another amazing project. You also need a straight edge and glue. You can use hot glue if you desire, but I highly recommend using a good quality wood glue on this one. So here I'm gluing 5 blocks together and I'm going to make 8 of these. And once that's done, I glue three blocks together and I make eight of those as well. Yeah. 
Next, you will need two spools of Dollar Tree's jute cord, and just like the blocks, you will have plenty left over for another amazing project when you're done. So I'm going to wrap the blocks with a cord. I dab hot glue on one end and then I start wrapping. Now I like to apply hot glue all around in the beginning, at least for the first few rows. Then I apply a few dabs here and there, and especially all around where the two blocks meet, just to seal it even more. There's quite a bit of fraying, too much for my liking. So after I finished wrapping, I did take a candle lighter and quickly and very carefully waved it over the cord until those frayed areas melted away. I always do this over my kitchen sink just to be safe. You can also go outside and do it over the barbecue grill. Otherwise, with a good pair of scissors, just trim out those frayed areas. For the smaller blocks, you will need to completely cover it, including the sides. So I do the same thing and apply hot glue on one end. And once that's completely covered, instead of stopping, I keep going. I apply a little hot glue on the top part and slowly and carefully wind and press it down. And it's going to kind of look like an oval spiral. Now it's important to press down as you're winding so that it'll lay flat and not bulge out. Then I cut the cord and work on the other end. I find it easier to wind from the outer end working inward as opposed to the inner end winding out. Now I did end up completely covering all eight of the smaller blocks, but you really only need to cover four of them. That was an oversight on my part because as you'll see later, you're not even going to see the ends of the other four. I'm going to form a rectangle with the smaller blocks, so I hot glue them like so. And in the end, I will have two rectangles, one for the top and one for the base. Next, I work on the larger blocks and I hot glue them together so that they form an L shape. And I'll make four of these. So I hot glue them down onto the rectangle base, then I add hot glue on the top of each L-shaped block and quickly and carefully place the last rectangle on top. You'll need 12 Super Jumbo Craft Sticks to make the base and lid cover. To make the base, place the jumbo craft sticks side by side, then lay the lantern on top and mark with a pencil. And this is the area that will be cut. I glue the sticks together and once that's dry, I apply hot glue on the bottom of the lantern and place it down on the craft sticks. Then I repeat to make the lid, I measure, cut, and glue together the remaining craft sticks. To make sure they don't fall apart, I glue four smaller craft sticks onto the lid like so. I glue six tumbling blocks together to form a rectangle then I glue it down onto the craft sticks. And on top of that, I glue five blocks, making sure that they are evenly spaced out. For the handle, I braid jute cord. You can also use jute rope, and I secure that to the size of the rectangle with hot glue. Then I hot glue jute cord all around the bottom base as well as the lid and you really don't have to but this gives it that finishing touch and makes it look well put together. And one more detail that can't be missed, I take bamboo skewers and I measure them diagonally like so, then cut and hot glue them in place to make an X. And we're done! How beautiful this turned out! I absolutely love this piece, and I hope you do too. 
Thank you for watching. I'm going to make a paint mixture using white chalk paint, though any white paint will work, and I'm going to warm it up a bit with a drop or two of brown paint. This one's called Coffee Bean by Folk Art. I mix that up, then I'm going to thicken it up with some baking soda. Now as far as ratio, it's really up to you. Just know that the more baking soda you add, the thicker the paint will be, adding more texture to the vase. So I take my clean vase, and this is Dollar Tree's 7 inch glass vase that's flared at the top, and I start painting, making long horizontal strokes. Just have fun with it. I'm using a chalk paintbrush to apply, but you can use any paintbrush. If you like, you can paint a little bit on the inside, but I'm going to leave this one unpainted. Turn it over and paint the bottom. Now if you want to speed up drying time but don't have a heat gun, just use a blow dryer and that will cut the drying time significantly. Now we're going to add some color to the base so I make the same mixture but this time I'm going to make it darker by adding more brown but you can use any color you want, grays or blacks would also look awesome but for this one I'm going to keep it within the neutral family. I'm not going to mark or tape around the area I want painted because I want it to look hand painted. Plus, it's also a little challenging taping off a curved base, but I do recommend using a foam brush because that will give you a nice straight line. So with a brush, I start off low and gradually paint upwards until I get to the height I want. I do the same thing with a cylinder vase. I did apply painter's tape around this one, but after I removed it, I thought I should have just freehanded it. I probably didn't press the tape down hard enough, but that was an easy fix. I turn it over, paint the bottom, and that is it. And if you want it to last, use a spray sealer and that will prevent it from chipping. How gorgeous these faces are. Definitely looks like you spent more than a dollar. You will need two house shape frames and two rectangle frames, and these are about 11 by 4 inches. So first I remove the metal tabs on the house frame and only the sawtooth hanger on the rectangle frame. I like the cardboard and the words in these frames and I'd like to use them on another project. So instead of using them, I'm going to use it as a template on a Dollar Tree foam board instead. So trace it on the foam board and cut it out and I'm going to make two of these. I picked out some of my favorite decorative paper in fact, I could not decide, so I ended up cutting up several. So I trace the board onto the paper and cut it out. To adhere the paper, I am going to use a craft glue stick. So I apply that all over, then carefully place the paper down. And I do the same thing for the other foam board as well. And like I mentioned, I just could not pick one design, so I did multiple. And you know, I think it was kind of a good idea because now I can customize it and change the look of the toolbox caddy whenever I want. To put the toolbox together, you are going to need a good strong glue. Since this is not real wood, I'm going to use E6000. If you do too, just make sure you are in a very, very well ventilated area. So I apply the glue and then clamp it down. And these are just Dollar Tree clothespins and I applied adhesive felt on it as well just for a better grip because they can slip off. So the house shape frames are going to be glued in between the rectangle frames like so. And really let that dry completely before moving on to the next part. So now it's dry and it feels very sturdy. You're going to need 8 Super Jumbo Craft Sticks and 8 Jumbo Craft Sticks. So using my Dollar Tree Carpenter Square, I line up the jumbo craft sticks like so. Take the house frame cardboard easel, place it on top of the sticks and trace the ends. And these are going to be glued to the sides of the toolbox. For the base, I measure the distance needed, then I mark the craft sticks, then cut them all out. I place the super jumbo craft sticks down right before gluing, just to make sure they're evenly spaced. Initially, I used hot glue, but that did not stick so well it kept popping out, so instead I used Gorilla Glue and that worked perfectly. I do the same thing for the sides. I space out four on each side and then I glue it down. I'm going to place a dowel on top, and this was from Walmart that I cut out to fit, and I glue that on, clamp it, and then let that dry completely.
Once everything has dried, it's time to decide which design to put in. I still can't decide, so I'm going to try them all. So when you put the foam board in, make sure to pull up on the metal tabs and that will push it forward and give it a nice clean look. I'm not going to paint this. If you want, you can certainly paint it or distress it, but I love it as is. So there are some edges that need some touch up. I take some Dollar Tree spackle and I mix in a little paint. I'm using khaki from Apple Barrel and I apply that on the areas needed and then I wipe it out and wow, it looks flawless. And that is it. So beautiful. I think this is a perfect gift to decorate your home or use it to present your gifts for Mother's Day or any special occasion. For the next DIY, I'm going to be using the two picture frame boards from DIY number one. And I have two more from a previous tutorial and I'll link that video above. So first remove the words and these easily come off. You just have to carefully pry it out. I'm going to be using home for this project and I'll be saving the other three for another one. Then I pull out the decorative paper and this is going to be the back so you can leave it if you want or you can cover it up. But I do want to paint the back so to remove the rest of the paper I just take a damp cloth and rub that on top and the paper comes off easily and this really just takes a few seconds to do. I didn't want to spend too much time doing this so whatever didn't come off the first time around I left it and it was good enough to paint over. I check the front to make sure everything looks good and clean, then I turn it back because now it's time to connect the boards together. I'm going to use four super jumbo craft sticks, so I lay them down like so, then I measure and then cut, and I do the same thing with the other sticks. To make sure the boards are evenly spaced out, I place these small skewers between. I lay the craft sticks back down just to position it where I want it to be before gluing. I place a smaller craft stick on the side just to make sure it's straight and then I glue the sticks down with wood glue. And then I do the same thing on the other side. For extra support, if you want, you can glue down smaller craft sticks over those joints where the two sticks come together. Once completely dried, it is ready to paint. I'm going to paint the boards white with Waverly chalk paint. So with a brush, I apply the paint all over the boards making sure they are evenly coated. You can paint this whatever color you want and just customize it to your preference, but whatever color, it's going to look amazing in the end. I distress with a dark gray. This is pewter from Apple Barrel and I get that all over the edges and corners and I lightly brush here and there until it looks like distressed wood and wow, what a difference paint makes. I take the home sign, I like it just the way it is and I apply hot glue on the back and place that towards the bottom. And I was a little undecided if I was gonna put some greenery or a wreath. Either I think would have looked awesome but I went with a greenery. So I pulled out a couple branches from a greenery bouquet that I've had and I tied the ends together and that makes it easier to glue down. I'm also going to add these adorable paper and faux leather flowers. So I hot glue those down. I place the three flowers side by side and it looked perfect. If you want to hang this, you can hot glue a piece of rope on the back. And that is it. This came out so adorable and even better than I could have imagined. I'm going to use yarn and a foam wreath from Dollar Tree. I'm going to completely cover the foam with the yarn so I apply a dab of glue on the back to get it started and then I wrap it around. To make this part go faster, I wrap it several times around first and then I push it back like so and then twist it towards me to tighten the yarn. Of course the direction will depend on which way you're wrapping. For better control of the yarn, 
I like to unwind several yards of it and then rewrap it around tightly. And before you know it, you're at the end, back to where you first started, and I just secure the end with hot glue. I'm going to embellish the wreath with flowers from Dollar Tree and greenery from Michaels. I pull out a few stems and hot glue them onto the bottom of the wreath. And then I hot glue the flower right in the middle and then I add a few more greenery to make it look more full. I want to add a little wooden sign on top so I'm going to use paint sticks which I'll have to cut down to fit. So I tape them together and draw a line where I need to cut and I'm going to use this miter box and saw from Home Depot to cut out that extra piece. Once that's cut off, I'm going to apply Waverly Antique Wax on the wood. I really want the wood to look weathered and not so dark, so to achieve that, with a damp cloth, I remove as much of the wax as I can. And once everything dries, it really looks like weathered wood. Then I glue the wood together. I got this sign, Bless This Nest, from a previous DIY. It was from a Dollar Tree frame, and I'm going to paint it white with chalk paint. You can also use stencils or stickers for this one. And then I apply glue on the back, and I use a brush to spread it out. Then I hot glue that on the wreath. To hang, I cut out some burlap to match the greenery. You can also use jute rope or any ribbon. And that is it. This turned out so adorable. It's perfect for your home or as a gift for a loved one. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, make sure to subscribe below. You'll need 16 tumbling blocks and one of these small wooden cubes and I bought both of these at Dollar Tree. So I take the cube and I glue four tumbling blocks around the sides of it to form a cross. Then I take four more tumbling blocks and glue them standing up at the end of each block like so. And this will be the bottom of the stand. So when I turn it over, you'll see that it's a smooth surface for a vase to be placed on. For the remaining eight blocks, I glue two together at a time, and when I'm done, I'll have four sets of these. Then I glue those blocks on the edge like so, and I let the piece dry. I'm going to paint the stand with black acrylic paint, so I brush that all over. This is always my favorite part. And then I let that dry a bit and touch up any areas needed. For the second stand, you'll need eight tumbling blocks and five wooden cubes. Just like the first stand, I glue four tumbling blocks around the sides of the cube. And instead of tumbling blocks for the legs, I glue four cubes instead. Once it's dried enough, I turn it over and glue the four remaining tumbling blocks on the edge. And this stand will be the smaller of the two. Then I paint it with black acrylic paint and that is it. I love how both of these turned out. It pairs perfectly with Dollar Tree's cylinder vases and it only took minutes to do. I purchased this wooden tray from Dollar Tree and I start off by sanding it. There were some rough areas so it needed a good sanding to prep it for the next step. 
I'm going to stain it using Minwax in Dark Walnut, but you can also paint it as well. So I apply that all over, but one thing with staining Dollar Tree wood decor pieces, the areas where the glue has dried, usually in the joints, those areas do not hold a stain. But since I will be distressing the tray, it works because I do want a natural, worn out look in the end. After I apply the stain and let that dry, I lightly brush on white chalk paint. Then I sand the whole thing down with sandpaper and a sanding block. I want to dull down the stain and leave a few brush strokes here and there, and that will give it a beautiful rustic look. I got this flower sticker pack from Dollar Tree. It came with six large stickers over six inches wide. It's so pretty. I'm going to place it in the center of the tray and it's pretty much going to cover most of the surface. When laying that down, I make sure it goes down smoothly with no air bumps and I make sure the ends are completely sealed. It is so large. I love how it spills over to the sides. To elevate the tray, I'm going to add the Dollar Tree wooden cubes to the bottom. I stain, paint, and sand it just like the tray, and then I glue them down to the bottom. And finally, I add a coat of Minwax Polycrylic just to protect the tray and the flower. And that is it. Such a dramatic transformation. So rustic and beautiful, and the flower adds a charming touch. You will need 74 tumbling tower blocks. So one box which comes with 72 plus two more pieces. I glue three blocks together at a time and I end up with 14 of these. I'm going to glue five of them in a row, separated by one block positioned vertically in between and in the ends. And I make two sets of these. For the four left over, I glue two at a time like so. Once that is dried, I'm going to glue them together to form a rectangle. And I glue the smaller sides in between the longer sides. To make the base, you will need about 17 jumbo craft sticks. I believe I got these at Dollar Tree, and I lay them out side by side, then place a rectangle box on top and trace the inner area of the box. Then I trim the sticks down. I'm going to add some color using Waverly Antique Wax, and I do this before applying the base, but you can definitely stain or paint after once everything is complete. I do like to paint underneath and once that base is on, there's going to be areas that will be a little hard to reach, so I just paint it all before. Once I finish the rectangle, I apply the wax on the tumbling blocks and craft sticks. To make the base, I place six blocks on each side, then I glue them in place. Then I place the craft sticks down and I'm just seeing how well they lay because I don't want there to be any gaps. I want a tight fit. And then I glue the sticks down like so, and I did have to cut a little piece to fill the little gap in the end. Look how gorgeous this looks. Now you can stop here. I think it's adorable just like that, but I do want to add handles. 
So I glue four tumbling blocks together to form a C with two blocks in the middle laying flat and two on the ends laying on its side. Then I apply the wax to match. I glue it in place and I am done. This came out so beautiful. You can use it as a planter, a flower box, or even as a decorative organizer. And the best part is that this costs just about a dollar to make. I'm going to be using another gold basket and this DIY is going to be quick and easy but will give it a dramatic transformation. You'll also need four paint sticks which I purchased at my local Home Depot. I measure the length of the base of the basket and mark it. And mine came out to just a tad under 6 and 7 8 of an inch. So with a miter box and saw, I cut it to the size I need. I lay them down with the ruler marks facing up and I'm going to glue them together using hot glue and three small popsicle sticks which are a little too long so I just trim off the curved ends. I apply hot glue on a popsicle stick, don't burn your fingers, and then I place it down like so, pushing down firmly. Then I glue down the other two. And now I have a nice flat base for my basket. I'm going to add some color using Waverly Antique Wax, but you can use whatever stain or paint you prefer, or even leave it unpainted. So I just buff it on all over, and I do want it to be nice and saturated. When that has dried, I just drop that in, and I'm done! Very quick and easy. The baskets are gorgeous on their own, but I do love the combination of the wood and the metal even more.